Okay, so we have now returned back into the product opposing viewpoints in context. We're going to go ahead and take a look at a viewpoint article. That is the second heading in the left hand column. And it brings up an article for us called The Democrats are Capitalizing on the Flint Water Crisis for Political Gain. Once again, that title is a live link. So once you click on it, through the magic of the computer, you are going to see the article. So the article starts here. It appears the federal government shutdown will be avoided and continues on. Once again, you have those related subjects off to your right in that gray bottom box. Public finance, probably not something that you would be anticipating if we were looking for water pollution articles, but we do have drinking water. We do see water pollution back there as well. And then if we were aware of the fact that Flint, Michigan was having a crisis or has had a crisis over drinking water, uh, you could have used drinking water and or you could also click on Flint, Michigan and have access to additional articles. So as I'm scrolling down the page, that's where you are seeing the article in its entirety. And as you get to the bottom of the page, you'll notice that this is where they are offering you a citation. Um, because MLA 8th edition is underlined, you could know that this is an A, excuse me, is an MLA citation, but just as easily you can obtain an APA citation by simply clicking on APA 6th edition right next to it. And you can do one of two things. I just simply recommend going ahead and doing the copy and paste like we talked about in the Academic Search Premier database and then copying it down to a Word document if you had the Word document open on your page. So it quickly provides you with that citation. Um, this database as well has tools in which to help you. Notice, however, that in this particular product, your tools options are horizontal across the page as opposed to being vertical over in the product Academic Search Premier. So you can download this article, you can cite it, which we have also seen at the bottom. You can send it to yourself um, if you are interested in highlighting something that you found in the article that you want to have your attention drawn to, then you can also use that option as well. And here are even some additional, uh, this time around it is related articles. And then right below that is where those related subjects or those related topics were as well. And those can be wonderful uh, references as well. And we see our author here. And it's not a very long article. It's just 906 words in length. I'm going to go ahead and use my back arrow on the top left hand corner. And that takes us back to our different options that we have as far as the type of sources. And now we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen. And that last heading on the right hand side is websites. So I'm going to click on the link for websites and it already is telling you that you're going to have the opportunity to look at 17 different 
websites that they feel that the owners of this product feel are very relevant to the topic that you are looking for. Let's go ahead and click on the Clean Water Fund. And instructors have their own individual preference as to whether they will allow you to use websites or not allow website usage uh, when you are writing your paper. That is an individual instructor preference, so please, by all means, um, before you start digging around and potentially finding excellent content in one of these websites, please do check with your instructor um, to see whether they will allow you to use content from a website. Some of them may automatically say yes, others may automatically say no, and others may say, send me the link to what it is that you want to use or send me the link to the website and I'll take a look at it and make a choice from there. But please, please, please um, be very cautious. So the page that has loaded for us provides us with a brief description about what a user can expect to find on this particular website that we have yet to visit, but it is literally just a mouse click away. So after reading that couple of sentences, if you think that you want to move forward and see for yourself what is on that website, all you have to do is click the live link you get the disclaimer that says, hey, guess what? You're going to leave our site and go somewhere else. And if you still want to do that, you're going to click continue. And now without having to type anything into the address bar to get to the Clean Water Fund, you are automatically taken there, uh, taken to that website by just a mouse click. And then you have the opportunity to follow their links and locate, hopefully locate, something that you were hoping to find that you haven't been able to find anywhere else. And we're not going to spend much time here, but I did want you to see how that worked and then to be returned to the opposing viewpoints in context website, you'll notice that on the top toolbar, the live tab is the website that we are currently on. To its immediate left, it says Gale in context. You're going to click that link for Gale in context. You are back to where you had the ability to read the description about the Clean Water Fund website. And then you can use the back arrow in the top left hand corner and you can choose to potentially look at another website if you've decided that you're not positive whether you can use a website or not so you want to go and investigate more options within this uh, database you can simply use your back arrow again and it will take you back to those various categories of information on water pollution so again, the tools are very, very similar. Um, the, the layout is a little bit different. Um, you have the opportunity to use the search box if you already come into this product knowing what it is that you're looking for or if you want to search through the giant listing of each of the categories and each of the topics that are provided under those broad categories. So we don't typically spend as much time in the Gale product, not that it's of lesser quality than the Academic Search Premier, but you will find that most academic databases are structured very, very similarly. And so um, I did want you to see this source, but we have a lot of the same but the things that I did highlight to you were things that were slightly different and available in the Gale in context. Opposing Viewpoints database than were in Academic Search Premier. 
All right, we are going to move now into Noodle Tools. So to the left of the Active tab for Gale and Context, we find A to Z resources. And we're going to come back and use the tab Library Home. And it was a more bright green on that dark green toolbar at the top of your page. And now that third icon, if you hover over that, um, turns that bright green again. And it's a section for citing sources. And there are two options there for you. And the bottom one is Noodle Tools. So if you'll go ahead and click on Noodle Tools. Um, this is another service, another opportunity for students to receive help. Um, I have a, a sign-in already established, but you are going to need to actually register with an account for this particular product. So in this particular case, you would click on the register option. And this is the page that will display for you. Um, you are a student. You're going to be asked through a drop down menu what your graduation rate is. Go ahead and pad that a couple of extra years. Um, things sometimes get in the way. Life sometimes gets in the way. Uh, perhaps you take some classes with us and have to take some time off and come back. Uh, maybe you just like how that site is uh, laid out and maybe you decide to go on to a four-year institution, but you really like how Noodle Tools works. So as long as you maintain your password um, with Ivy Tech, you can continue to get into your Noodle Tools account. You are going to uh, choose an ID. That personal ID can be anything. It could be your first name. It could be your first and your last name. Then you are going to be asked to type in a password and retype that password. You're going to supply your email address. And I do re highly recommend that you use your Ivy Tech email address. Then you are going to just supply your initials. And finally, you're going to supply only the last four digits of your phone number and those will not, sh they should not show up. Um, the, the digits should not appear. They should just be the little circles. And then if you're somebody who also likes to stay connected, um, they do have via the App Store or Google Play, they do have the opportunity for you to download their free app. So I am going to sign in. Anytime that you see those uh, bubbles that popped up there just briefly, that is letting you know that the, the product is working for you and that something new will be popping up very, very quickly. So this is what you are presented with um, on your screen. So the first thing we are going to do is come over to the left-hand side of our screen. You'll notice as I move my cursor off, the new projects with the plus sign is green. As I move over towards it, you're going to go ahead and click that link. You're going to create um, a project title. So I believe everybody that's currently w watching this will be an English 111 student. So If you put your instructor's last name after you type in English 111, and then if you type that instructor's last name, and then follow it up by the semester in which you had that instructor, that tends to make it a nice project title so that when you have to come back and look at things, um, you will have a reference point. Oh yes, I first learned how to use this particular product when I was taking that English class. 
It wants to know what your citation style is, and of course ours will be APA, and we're going to choose that we're going to be a junior citation level user. And I'm almost out of time, so we pause once again.